at this time we'll call the January 17th, 2017 Alexander County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. I would like to recognize for invocation Dr. Jeff Peel and uh, Vice Chairman Ronnie Reese for the Pledge of the Allegiance. So if you would please stand. Let's pray. Dear Lord, God, we thank you this evening for allowing us to live in a wonderful place, Lord, to uh, be blessed in so many ways with all the uh, great people that were around, Lord, the wonderful values and just the spirit of community and, uh, and, and family that we're able to live in every single day here in Alexander County. God, we're, we're just thankful for all that you have done for us, Lord, for protecting us and taking care of us, Lord. And tonight as we do official business, Lord, for the county, Lord, we just pray that you would lead all minds to work together, Lord, all facets to work together, and that we can truly continue to do great things for our people, Lord, to make our community the very best that it can be, Lord, to be a light and, uh, and to shine real brightly for you, God, in all that we do. We love you. We thank you, Lord. Mostly we thank you for Jesus, Lord, and our salvation and what he's done for us. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's play. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, do we have any commissioner's reports? Um, I'll, I'll just mention this. Um, if you've been listening to the news at all, uh, Friday we're going to be uh, transitioning from uh, one government to the next. And normally um, we have a peaceful transition to power, and we're having that this time as well. But um, I just think it's sad, all the protests that are planned. Um, you know. When you, when you look at other countries, sometimes when they have elections, you have mass rioting, chaos out in the streets. And to see that being planned in the United States of America is very sad. So uh, I just think, uh, you know, I know there's nothing we can do about that here in little Alexander County, but it, it's just a sad, sad state of uh, our country right now and I you know most of the people in Alexander County regardless of who they voted for uh, we get along and we understand that um, not not every election goes our way so that's all I have okay. anything else from you gentlemen I just uh, starting a new year for us so I'm looking forward to good things in a new year with our uh, board and uh, welcoming on uh, Dr. Peel too and all of us working together we'll try to do the best we can for Alexander County. I did mention, uh, I want to mention one other thing, I forgot about this. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, election, I know there's been a lot of talk about uh, uh, hacking uh, during the election process and I think that's uh, the wrong use of the word. Uh, there's never been any uh, kind of charges made that any uh, voting machines were changed or that those tabulations were changed. And um, I want to report that in Alexander County, and we need to thank our election workers, uh, they did a great job um, this election. We had new voting equipment. And I know that there had been some talk a couple years ago about why did we need to buy new voting equipment? Why did we need to do this? Uh, if you look at Durham County, that's the why, why we needed to get this voting equipment. Uh, they had severe problems because their county commissioners put off till the next election buying new voting equipment when they were supposed to have just like we were. So uh, our, our people did a great job and uh, I wish to thank them. So. Also, I think it was really good to see the turnout, what we saw from our citizens. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's your right to vote. It was earned. Uh, 
through bloodshed and things of that nature. And for people to come out, it was really good to see us above the 70% of our voters coming out. It should be that way all the time. It's sad that it's not, but it was, it was really good to see that. It's a, uh, you know, for years, I'm a former history teacher and have studied government and organizations throughout time. And when at any election, you, you have a choice, like people had a choice in Alexander County. Not everyone chose to vote for me, uh, but when it's all said and done, I'm the person that's going to be uh, representing you, and I want to do that to the very, very best of my ability. And if we could just, gosh, if we could just see that across our state and, and across our country to where people could work together, put aside differences, and don't focus on uh, what you disagree on, but focus on what you agree on and work together to do good things. That's certainly my goal uh, for Alexander County, and it would be nice to see that happen in the state of North Carolina and the United States as well. Great. Um, anything else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, one thing I would mention, actually, uh, the chairman and I had the opportunity to attend the um, Alexander County chapter of the NAACP's um, Martin Luther King. I, I, I don't know what term to use. I mean, it was, I'll say actually, um, I don't say, you know, remembrance or, but, uh, but anyway, it was at the Hidnight Center Monday, yesterday, and um, just want to say to the folks that organized it, the folks that uh, spoke, the folks that performed, um, phenomenal music, um, and and I and I in, in my you know opinion it was a good turnout. I mean a good turnout um, of you know. I don't want to say county officials and you know, but count you know county folks as well as private citizens, um, you know, and as I I guess um, I would say I I was at, you know, I've gone through school obviously you know and you hear in history class you learn this and that, um, but. Um, I guess yesterday, yesterday was the first significant, um, like I said, I don't want to say ceremony, but um, or ode to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but he did indeed have a very profound effect um, on our society. And if, if we would only... Um, if we would only spread kindness and um, do a lot of things that he tried to preach, the world would be a better place. And and I thoroughly enjoyed being you know being a part of it. And their speaker was a gentleman by the name of Chaz Beasley, who has roots in Alexander County. He lived here about eight or nine years, but. Uh, Chaz is an attorney in Charlotte, went to Harvard University, and then earned his law degree at Georgetown University. And he is, was elected the North Carolina House of Representatives, the 92nd District in 2016, 31-year-old young man. And to say he was impressive <laughs> uh, would be an understatement. He's the son of Ms. Sherry Bruner of Conover, who is a graduate of Alexander Central, I believe and uh, <clears throat> the grandson of the late Sonny Bruner and Mrs. Shirley Barker Bruner of Alexander County. And uh, it's kind of nice to see one of our own, you know, rise and, and do so well, but he's a very sharp young man. And I think obviously we'll have a bright future. Good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one more thing, and I promise I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> promise? No, just... um, uh, uh, Mr. French, County Manager Rick French and myself uh, actually spent uh, the end of last week in Raleigh um, at the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners meeting there. Um, we were working on uh, uh, legislative goals for uh, the 100 counties of North Carolina. And um, uh, the meeting went pretty well. We, of course, had some uh, conflicts uh, as, you know, all rural counties do with the uh, larger, more urban counties, but uh, all in all, it was a 
very good meeting and uh, we did get to uh, uh, the governor came and spoke uh, during lunch uh, governor Roy Cooper so um, uh, it's it's going to be an interesting six months in Raleigh to say the least so yeah. a lot of transition all right is that it guys everybody at this time I would accept a motion for the adoption of our agenda make a motion to adopt the agenda I have a motion do we have a second second any discussion hearing none all those in favor of adoption of the agenda please raise your right hand those opposed okay uh, correct me if we're wrong miss Starnes but we do not have anyone signed up for public comment okay this time I would recognize John Pilkington director of planning and development uh, public hearing rezoning case 16-6 Kazai Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening to the board, and welcome to uh, Dr. Peel. Um, I guess the good news is you get your first rezoning out of the way, and there doesn't appear to be anybody here to <coughs> protest against it. So it That's a good sign, right? Be, should be painless, yeah. Batting a thousand. It should be painless. Um, before you tonight, we have a public hearing for rezoning request 16-6. Uh, uh, the applicant is Mr. Greg Kazai. The property owner um, of this property is Lynn Carlton. It's currently zoned Highway Commercial. Uh, Mr. Kazai is or requesting that the property be rezoned from Highway Commercial to RA20 Residential. Um, he's asking for only a portion of this property to be rezoned, which would be a pro approximately 7.64 acres. Um, the property is located <coughs> just north of Evans Drug and just uh, south of uh, the Me Mexico, Mexico Viejo. Viejo property. It actually adjoins that. Um, land uses within 100 feet uh, to the north are commercial, the south are also commercial, to the east and west are residential. Uh, the zoning districts within 100 feet or to the north are highway commercial, to the south uh, commercial, and to the east and west uh, residential. Or excuse me, I, I misread that. North and south are highway commercial. The east is zoned R20 and to the west is zoned R20 and highway commercial. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission met uh, in December, <coughs> the 9th, I believe. Yeah, I think December 9th, I apologize. And unanimously recommended that this property be, the 7.64 acres be rezoned uh, from its current uh, highway commercial to um, uh, RA20. Uh, Mr. Kazai's plans are to uh, construct a multifamily uh, development on the property. He is retaining uh, one and a half acres along, which you can see in your map, and I apologize to those in the audience and people that may uh, watch this uh, online or on, on the uh, cable channel. Um, the, the map is kind of blurry because I had to scan it, but um, there's one and a half acres that is going to be uh, kept as highway commercial that adjoins uh, NC Highway 127. Um, as noted in the recommendation, um, the uh, 2008 uh, comprehensive plan recommends that this property be retained as uh, commercial. Uh, however, based on the topography and the, um, <coughs> the demographics of the area, um, the larger portion of this property would probably be more suitable for a multifamily development as opposed to commercial. And I think uh, retaining the one and a half acres that fronts on NC Highway 127 um, kind of um, protects uh, commercial development in that area and doesn't, um, wouldn't hinder the development of the property. This piece right um, here. The Planning and Zoning uh, Commission's recommendation uh, was that it be approved and the proposed use is, I as I noted, that proposed use would be more suitable for a larger portion of the property uh, based on demographics and access to travel routes mm -hmm. for commuters mm -hmm. and also that the proposed rezoning and potential use is consistent with the growth patterns in the area. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. If not, yeah, it makes sense. What's the difference between RA20 and R20? RA20 allows multifamily development. The R20 is uh, does not. Strict, yeah, does not strictly <laughs> single family. He, he will still have to go through the uh, plan development, multifamily development uh, process, which will be a conditional use that comes back to this board as well. Um, but initially, the property needed to be rezoned because you couldn't do a multifamily development within. Um, 
highway commercial. John, do you know, would this be a phase project or was this, I mean, it's it, 7.64 acres is a lot for multifamily, so. It's possible, and Mr. Kazai is here. Um, he, he hasn't submitted a site plan yet. Um, I had actually um, uh, asked him not to. I kind of try to stay on the process of you're supposed to take into consideration everything when mm -hmm. rezoning a property. So I didn't want a site plan because it looks too much like you're approving a okay. specific project. But um, his intent, I think, would be to phase in the project, similar to what he's done. If you're familiar with out uh, behind Town Hall, mm -hmm. um, he's, he's doing some uh, duplexes over there. Um, this would be multifamily and not just two family, but uh, it, it would be he's phased that project and um, I would assume phase this one as well. Okay. Thank Mr. You. Chairman, one thing, one thing I would mention, and it doesn't pertain specifically to this, you know, this rezoning case or hearing, um, but with being you know, the business that I'm in, and actually John, I've been in his office several times, and I've talked to him on the phone several times. There, there, in my opinion, there are quite a few things in our zoning, co I guess you say zoning code or rules, whatever, that could be, that could possibly be better. One of one of them being the only zoning in Alexander County you can build multifamily housing on is RA-20. Um, you know, to me, a large apartment complex is definitely a commercial venture. Um, you know, the way I see it, you're, you know, yes, I understand people be living there, but it's very similar to, you know, very similar to many warehouses. You're renting space. And, you know, many warehouses have to be built on commercial. Well, you know, and there are just, you know, there are several things, and this isn't the only, you know, this isn't the only, this is just one of the things that I've sort of run into that I've kind of scratched my head as a real estate agent general contractor and you know um but you know but i you know so it's it's to me it's almost i don't want to say silly but it's to me it's almost silly that we have to have a rezoning case to change a piece of property that is commercial to something different to you know for a income producing for an product. income producing proper <clears throat> project that you know if I mean that is much more commercial than it is residential but you know that's just my opinion you know and, 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 traffic and that's some, well right and that's something that, that's something that we you know that we could potentially look at in the future you know is just trying to uh, you know I don't know if we want to do that or not well, but Josh and I agree with you you bring up a very good point the last I believe it was uh, the year 2000 was when we had our first z countywide zoning and it has not been updated except here and there ever since and maybe that's a good job for you John well um, <laughs> not to not to veer this uh, train too far off the tracks right. um, we um, are currently um, as you're aware the town of Taylorsville contracts uh, with the county now um, for us to provide their planning services um, and what I have been working on and, and the town has a contract with the Council of Governments for there to be a combined, there will be one zoning ordinance. Um, it will retain a lot of, Taylorsville re, will retain a lot of its current zoning and a lot, a lot of stuff will not change. But we have made some tweaks that, I apologize, um, we have made some tweaks to it to include things and simplify things as well. Nothing in the county is going to change at all. It's really more about, uh, as far as zoning, um, as far as zoning of property, we will not be changing any zoning of property within the county's jurisdiction. But we will have to include some of the town's jurisdictions within the county's ordinance. So it will be one zoning ordinance and it uh, identifies uh, property within the town and then property within the county. But in doing that, we have removed some things that are redundant or that are too, you know, that don't need to be, you know, as detailed as they are to try to simplify it a little bit. 
one of the things we had not addressed in that uh, instance would be something like this, um, allowing those types of projects in commercial. And, and that's something that um, when we, uh, w when it's presented, because both the town will have to adopt a new, it, a unified ordinance and, and the county would have to adopt the unified ordinance as well, um, that we could add to, um, look at how to add that to and allow commercial development, or excuse me, allow multifamily, high density multifamily to just exist in um, uh, commercial developments. Well, and, and I'm assuming just, I know, the, I know the zoning ordinances in this situation pretty well. You know, and I assume this will be, uh, this project will be, will fall under the current guidelines where you, you know, you take the area of the project. Yes. You subtract 20,000 square feet and then you divide by 5,000 square feet to get a maximum number of units. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's exactly that way, just not having it in front of me. But yeah, there's a density that right. can't be exceeded. Yes. Okay. Because I'm, I'm like say just general questions. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I just know I, I know I've had <clears throat> dealings in the past where that was you know that was. Um, okay. Well, I I would suggest that. Um, I know we're veering off point here, but it's been 17 years since the last zoning, the real updates have been made. Um, we need to look at that yeah we because there's a lot of there's been a lot of changes in transportation growth patterns uh there's been a lot of changes in this county in 17 years i, I agree i mean that's that's yeah. kind of where i'm you know and i think I mean, that's, that's a, why I'm, I'm saying what i'm saying is um utilities you know and, and i'll say this i know at one point at least from certain perspectives um you know, rental property was not looked upon favorably from the local government's perspective because you're not generating, you know, you're not going to generate as much property tax as if you, there was, you know, single family dwellings provided that housed that many same people. And, uh, you know, and, but you still have the services to provide being education and what, you know, and the other things. And so a lot of times, but in Alexander County right now, you know, the school system needs more students for funding. And, you know, the situ a lot of things have changed, like say in 17 years or even in 10 years where, you know, we may need to be a little more, a little more progressive in our thinking from a zoning perspective, you know, well, maybe we might be a good idea to form some type of task force to review that and look at what might make more sense. I mean, you could lay a cell phone out here from 2000, 2016, you wouldn't recognize it. So we need to take that same approach with our zoning. Maybe we take that offline as a to-do item and establish task force to work with John and come up with some provisions or changes. I mean, we got something here we need to deal with. Uh, We've actually already got that task force set up. We can just uh, reinvigorate it. Reinvigorate it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on the Jeff? Yes, sir. Back to the actual property. The approximately, I guess the approximate acre that's still left on 127, what is that access to the property or what would that be? Now, that, that property, that portion, what um, uh, Mr. Uh, Kazai had done was th this property exists as a nine nine acre track and he did not he has an option to purchase contingent upon the rezoning going through he has had the property surveyed and established the meets and bounds for thank you chad for what portion will actually be rezoned and you can see there on that the what i've outlined what's in pink is what's going to be left and state commercial uh, Save as an out parcel. The, the out bottom, parcel. The yeah. bottom right think, hand corner. Yeah, I think he's talking about the southern okay. portion that's on Highway 127. Yes, it, it, it would be used for access. It's 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 possible, and again, it would certainly be dependent upon the adjoining property owner where Mexico Viejo is that there may be dual access there. Um, that sort of thing also has to be approved by the DOT as to where his access would actually be. DOT will require a turn lane. Yes. To be put in More, yeah. 
more than likely, yes. And, and there's just a lot of room between the road <clears throat> and that, the, the road right of way and the actual access to the just property. Just like, you know, there's a lot of rock in the ground, too. Yeah. Yeah, because well, Bethlehem, you know, right. Bethlehem, when Bethlehem restaurant, then yeah, and, so. and it is certainly possible too that he may do access across the northern end of the property that's zoned commercial, which would actually access both the multifamily and the commercial property, which as well. may be what DOT wants to happen. I mean, that's the right. thing. You yeah. just yeah, no. okay. that that sort of thing's not set in stone yet. Right. Okay. Any right. other questions, gentlemen? <clears throat> All right. Would somebody like to entertain a motion? We've got a close hearing. public hearing. Oh, excuse me. I, just, I yeah. make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I was, I was requesting. Okay. Second. Motion. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you did. Uh, any dis <coughs> further discussion? You know, and all those in favor of closing the uh, closed session, raise your right hand. Okay. Now, sorry, I've got ahead of myself. Now, at this time. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, request to change from Highway Commercial to uh, RA-20 uh, based on the proposed use but would be more suitable for the larger portion of the property based on the demographics of the area and its access to travel routes for commuters. And uh, it's uh, rezoning and the potential use is consistent with the gross patterns in this area. So. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? A second. Okay, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And, Appreciate and I'll, uh, touch, and I'll talk with the county manager about future okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank, you. All right. thank you. And thank you, Mr. Kazai, for being willing to invest in our county. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, at this time, and I apologize, I will try to get your name right, but uh, the 2006 board audit presentation, Ms. Cha Moses, is that correct? That is correct. Yes. I didn't try all the names there. I just. Good evening. I'm Cotain Cha Moses with Martin Starnes and Associates. I am the audit manager for um, the county's audit for fiscal year 16, and I'd like to thank you for having us as your auditor again another year. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the 2016 financial statements um, that were audited, and this is as of June 30, 2016. Um, our firm issued an unmodified opinion. It means that we found no material misstatements that led us to believe the financial statements would be misleading to its readers. Um, so in other words, the county passed its audit and we'd like to thank the finance staff for their hard work in helping us get through the audit and getting the audit report submitted. Um, today it is submitted to the Local Government Commission and they have approved the report. Next. Um, so if we look at general funds revenues, the top three revenue source for the county is, of course, number one, property taxes, followed by local option sales taxes at 18% restricted intergovernmental revenues at 13%, and that includes um, federal, state, and local grants. Next. So if we look at the top revenue source, there was an increase from the prior year of 15.6%, um, and that's mainly due to the 12 and a half cent increase in the property tax rate um, from prior year. The overall tax collection rate for the county also increased. It went from 96.7% to 97.02%. That's good. That's good. This is your local option sales tax. We saw an increase from the prior year of 7%. The increase was due to statewide sales tax growth for the local option sales taxes. Next. And then the restricted intergovernmental, where all your um, grants are in, um, there's an approximate increase of $16,000 from the prior year. This is consistent to the prior year, so um, I didn't have a lot to say on this one. And if we look at the expenditures for the general fund, the top three functions of government that have the largest expenditures include human services at 31%, public safety at 26% and education at 17%.
So human services, we saw an increase of $240,000 from the prior year. In this function, you'll see the health department, department of social services, senior center, and the veterans services. And the increase here is mostly, uh, was mostly in the DSS administration. For public safety, there's a 6.7% increase from the prior year. And in this function of government, you'll have um, sheriff's depart the sheriff's department, the detention center, fire protection, emergency communications, inspections, and emergency medical services. Um, the increase here is the largest increase was in the sheriff's office, and um, we saw purchases of vehicles and equipment for public safety programs. And then finally, in the general fund, the third top uh, expenditure was in education. And so in this line, you're going to see the Board of Education, auditorium reimbursements, and the CBCC expenditures. There's an approximate in increase from the prior year of about $400,000. And the increase here is in the current expense line um, with the county appropriation to the Board of Education. So if we look at debt in the general fund, 2016, the principal payments was about $1.6 million. Interest paid was 341000 And you'll see there the total debt for the county at the end of 2016 was $10 million, of which 6.7 is in public safety and 3 million is in education. And to the right of that, you'll see when those debt are expected to be paid off. Is all of that $6.6 .6 million in the uh, law enforcement center? Okay. Next. So if we look at fund balance, Fund balance is defined as your assets plus your deferred outflows minus your liabilities plus your deferred inflows. And that's where you'll get to fund balance or net position. Um, within the general fund, you'll see five classifications on Exhibit C of the audit report. Um, you'll see non-spendable fund balance, restricted fund balance, committed, assigned, and unassigned. So the, in, within your non-spendable, you'll have inventories or prepaids or items that are not in, spend, in cash form. And then the restricted fund balance um, will be fund balance that's restricted by grantors or um, by state statute. And then committed fund balance, um, an example of committed fund balance is <coughs> a project ordinance that the board had approved. Um, and it takes a second um, motion from the board to spend the funds. Um, and also um, items that are in committed fund balance do not lapse at year end. So that's a little bit different from your assigned fund balance. On the assigned side, um, those appropriations do lapse at year end. An example of um, an assigned fund balance that the county has is the appropriation of fund balance for um, subsequent years expenditures. So everything else that's not in one of those four categories is put into your unassigned fund balance. Available fund balance as defined by the Local Government Commission is the general fund's total fund balance, less your non-spendable fund balance category, and less your stabilization by state statute, and then you arrive at available fund balance. And the, the Local Government Commission uses this amount to um, and percentage to compare you with other units your size. If you get below your peer group <coughs> level, you may receive a unit letter from the Local Government Commission. What, excuse me a second. And Mr. French, if you just so ever, the folks that are here, you know, understand what a letter from the essentially, if if our if our available fund balance goes below a certain amount, what is the repercussion? Well, it, it depends on how close you are but um, on your fund balance number. Of course, they, as she stated, they prefer us to be in a certain close to the average, but it would restrict borrowing money, it restrict projects. Um, there's drastic things LGC could do, but it generally, is, it deals with borrowing money and doing things. Um, it could affect some of the grants that we apply for and things of that nature. So it's pretty serious. So it we, could, we don't so like to. We don't like to. You know. So it could. So it could cause significant. Oh yeah. Problem. Plus, you know, they, when they write the letter and um, 
uh, Jennifer Herman can tell you this, that our experience has been, you know, they always want to tell you how you're going to fix it. So, you, so fixing it usually means increasing something or reducing something. So it's uh, not as simple as that, but <clears throat> it's something you don't want to get as a letter from the LGC. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, overall, there was an increase in general fund fund balance of $3.6 million. The available fund balance percentage for Alexander County is 28.35%, and that's calculated out of total expenditures and transfers out. Um, so as Mr. French was saying, the local government commission, what they require <coughs> is for a unit to have 8%. So um, looking at the, t the county's percentage, you're about three and a half months worth of expenditures. So if we put that in terms of dollars, the total fund balance in the general fund was $13.3 million. And then you're, again, we take out your non-spendable, your stabilization by state statute. So dollar-wise, you have available fund balance of close to $10 million. And that is an increase from the prior year of <coughs> almost $4 million. And that increase is mainly due to the increase in overall fund balance in the general fund. So looking at the solid waste fund, instead of referring to fund balance in your enterprise fund, we talk about net position. Um, so the cash from operations in the solid waste fund was $26,000 during fiscal year 16. You had a budgetary net income of $13,000. Um, this net income does not include your capital assets, your debt, your depreciation. And so this is on a budgetary basis. So if we're looking at your full accrual change in net position for that fund, there was a loss of $82,000 from the prior year. And then the total net position ended up at $79,000 and then um, unrestricted net position was a deficit of 653000 And what happens is on you, there's a, a category called net, invest, in, excuse me, net investment and capital assets. And so that actually exceeded um, the unrestricted, the um, total net position. Therefore, it created a deficit unrestricted net position for the county in this fund. So moving on to the water funds of the county, you've got Bethlehem Water District and the county's water and sewer fund. So cash from operations for the <coughs> Bethlehem Water District, 701,000. Budgetary net income of 365,000. And the county water and sewer, 563,000 in cash from operations and 251,000 in, in um, net income. So if we look at that on the full accrual basis, um, you had positive change in net positions in both funds. Bethlehem was $452,000, and the county water and sewers, $174,000. So if we look at those funds' net position, total net position was $2.6 million for Bethlehem and $9.4 million for the county. And unrestricted net position, $1.4 versus one point, almost $1.5 million versus $1.4 million for the county. Um, the unrestricted net position here is similar to the general funds um, um, available fund balance or um, unassigned fund balance. So if we look at debt in those two funds, outstanding debt at the end of the year is 322000 for, for the Bethlehem Fund, $5.4 million for the county fund, and then the principal paid, you can see there, and then the year of the debt that um, those debt will be paid off, 2018 and 2035. Um, that's all I have for tonight. Yes. Can you go back to the <clears throat> solid waste net position fund, please? Yes. And what does that actually mean? What does that actually mean? Yes, ma'am. Um, the whole fund, the equation that we saw earlier, assets, minus your liabilities, and deferred inflows and outflows, at the end of the year, the total net position in that fund was 79000 There's this, this thing called um, net investment and capital assets, and what that consists of is all your capital assets in that fund, 
and less. What are, what are your capital assets? So that would be capital plant. your equipment, mm -hmm. um, land, buildings, land. Yep. That's correct. All of that put together, and then any debt that's related to um, purchasing those capital assets is taken out of this number. So the net effect is $733,000. So if you're kind of looking at it um, on exhibit um, G, your net investment in capital asset outweighs your, it's more than your um, total net position. And so then that's why it created a deficit unrestricted net, pos net position, I'm sorry. Your net position is 79000 and then your um, net investment in capital assets is 733 and so then there's another category of net, net position in your enterprise fund called your unrestricted net position, so then it made it a deficit. Um, so if you look at um, your total assets, your non-current assets, that's where that 733630 is, is, and there's no debt related to it. Those are long-term capital assets, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Non-current assets, that's correct. And it, those two categories, is, are, they're just different categories that, that's required by um, general generally accepted accounting principles. I guess, I guess the, there's a question because they're, they're getting hung up on the, the negative, but the, it's a long-term asset. It's not a current asset, so it's, it's considered something that you can't turn into cash very readily. readily. That's correct. Okay, um, and, and that's why it's creating the negative. Well, one, one question on the water funds debt. Um, and Mr. French, this may be for you. The Bethlehem water system, the outstanding debt, uh, three three hundred twenty-two thousand six hundred ninety-two dollars. You know, debt will be paid off in two thousand eighteen. What is the? I mean, I see there's not a lot of interest that we put. You know, we didn't pay much interest based on this information, and you know year 2016 do you know what the rate I mean like what the interest rate is no but it's in the it's in the, the audit report okay so it's in the big report because you know it, what's that I'm sorry the the water the the water fund debt I mean the Bethlehem the Bethlehem system you're the probably talking two percent or three percent. Yeah, point, I was say. I mean, the, you know, the, the debt, the debt is down to three hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. You know, which compared to the county system is very, very manageable. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me when that debt service was ever going to come off, and I think there's no, there's. You know, once the debt service is off, then we have maintenance and repair costs. So, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't know where that'll put us, but um, I was really just kind of wondering what the interest rates were, you know, and <coughs> is there any, re you know, but obviously if it's 2% or so, there's no point in doing anything at all. Hey, water, water. You know, debt on water lines is always, you know, or has been since I've been on this board around two or three percent. So I don't know. Anything Very like three. Yeah. No. Well, you get to tax exempt yeah. interest, and you know, usually that's a, about sixty-five percent of the current problem rate. Well, and I'll say, and year. if it's two percent, you know, with the economy looks like it's getting a little healthier <coughs> based on interest rates going up and you know some other factors I'm not an economist um, but when you look at um, when you look at inflation two percent I mean there may be a net discount almost um, so uh, I, I, I want to point out one thing um, 
if you go back to fund balance and <laughs> it's it's taken eight years, but I finally get to say that we have a fund balance that's over 24 percent. And uh, I believe when you guys uh, came in two years ago, we were right at 19 percent, 18, 19. Am I correct on that? It's 18. 18 percent. <clears throat> and uh, we've got it up yeah, to 28 percent now. Yeah, and I say yeah. we. Um, yeah. Here in Maverick. Uh, you know, it, it's having. Um, Commissioners that are concerned about every dollar we spend, our department heads, they've done a good job, uh, our finance department, um, and the taxpayers, you know, to be frankly, and uh, Frank, and um, also sales tax. Sales tax is up, I'm going to say it's over three, four percent over the last few years and uh, from two years ago. So all that makes a difference, and, and we finally got where. I feel good about our fund balance. Um, back in, you know, 15 years ago, our fund balance in Alexander County, of course, I wasn't on the board then, but it was less than two and a half percent, which means you've got about two weeks of funds uh, put back in reserve to pay bills. And, uh, you know, that's just not acceptable. And, uh, but we've, we've worked very hard for the last 15 years. Um, many commissioners on this board have, and I, I think it's just an accomplishment. And uh, and and our taxpayers, you know, is property tax owners as well. So, well, I, you know, I think that that was accomplished through a very hard decision, one nobody wanted to make, was raising the tax rate. Yep. You know, I'd like to sit here and say kudos. We found ways to save money, and that's how we funded it. But in reality, it was a tax increase. Well, it was partially. Partially. I say, but but, Mr. Chairman, I, I will say, and it, you know, definitely what was not me, you know, but I do believe that as a board, oh yeah, in the past two years, you know, if you look at if you look at our budget and you look at actual expenditures, we, you know, we're we're being frugal, and we're you know, and we're asking we're asking everybody, you know, we're asking departments, we're asking Mr. French. I know he gets tired of hearing it, you know, to to watch watch every dime, and anytime we come, you know, our expenditures come in under budget, yeah. you know, I think. The departments, the department heads, the you know county manager, you know everybody needs a, a pat on the back. Even though we we have been, some of us especially have been almost obnoxious about <laughs> you know not spending money. Well, I think it's one of those things that had to be done. Our fund balance couldn't continue to slide, and and again, no matter how we all felt about that decision, none of us liked it, but. We had to right size our fund balance and move on down the road so that you could do things in the future. And um, and uh, yes, Josh, I agree. I think we've looked at this stuff very, very thoroughly. You're not just going to catch every single thing where you have an opportunity. Um, I will say, just looking at the audit financials, although rates have gone up a little bit, I see a couple here that we might want to at least reach out to our lender and see if they may modify. Um, we're at 3.19 on the uh, law enforcement center, mm -hmm. I think. And again, typically you'll see uh, nonprofits usually priced somewhere at about 65% of the current prime lending rate. And plus, we probably look a little bit better with that fund balance. Um, okay. We have looked at that. The way those um, mm -hmm. long contracts are written, we are not allowed to refund. So we have a prepayment penalty? A large one, yes. Any chance we reach, have we calculated prepayment penalty in comparison to rate savings? Um, I've had a financial analyst look it over and it would be more expensive to refinance than to continue paying what we have now. Okay. So. Who, who are the, who are the, I mean, like, it's building one of the loans that you, you're mentioning, who are they with? Bank of America. Bank of America. Bank of America. Yeah. Typically your, your larger mm -hmm. bank, uh, Wales, SunTrust is a big player in the municipality. BB&T does a good bit of it, too. They're well, very I, good at it. I mean, I hate to say this because Milton has the position he has in the private sector, but, you know, banking is legal robbery, so. <laughs> well, we have looked at the ones that are available to be refinanced, and several of these that are on here we have done that in the past. So the ones uh, that we have now that um, probably look like you should 
talk about refinancing, we have already discussed that with um, our consultants, and it would cost more to okay. refinance than to continue paying what we're doing now. Well, maybe in 2011, 3.19 was a good rate because probably the risk parameters of our deal was, it well, was we look better time. today than yeah. we did then. Mm -hmm. would. Um, well, and fund balance matters. So mm -hmm. um, Thank it, you, it allows you to, to borrow at a lower rate. And I'll say one other thing about uh, what uh, Josh was saying. Uh, you know, we, we've, as a board, we've tried to scrutinize everything. Um, and I think where we have spent money at, it is to get the biggest bang for the buck. And I think we've done a good job of that, so. In regard to our peers, what would you say is the average fund balance of our peer group? Uh, the most recent figures are from the 2015 fiscal year, mm -hmm. and the average um, for our peer group was 31.19%. So we're just a little bit below. Okay. And who would be in our peer group? Um, Davey. I've got it right here. Mecklenburg. Forsyth. <laughs> <laughs> Lake. <laughs> Orange. Right. What, what's the uh, state recommendation? Not the, not the lowest that they the recommend. Average. They, they just they recommend us, the average. They do not want us to fall below fifty percent of the average right. of okay. our peer okay. group. Um, in our peer group, we are looking at Anson County, Ash, Bladen, Davie, Macon, okay. Scotland, um, Yadkin County, Richmond County. Those. Okay. So some folks kind of look like us. Some of those are eastern, but they're agriculture in nature and. Yeah. Well, and the peer group is based on the population, so it's from 25,000 to um, 50,000 population. Okay. I'm just happy we're over 24%. So. <laughs> yeah. I've been preaching on that for years now. Yeah. yeah, I just reiterate, too, great job of the Finance Committee and by Mr. French, and I'm sure, you know, I kind of call him a lot, and we're talking about saving and all of this stuff, but I appreciate the the help he's willing to give us any time and uh, working with other departments. That's what takes everybody working together. Thank you. Any other questions? Do we need to vote on this to accept the results? Yes. Okay. Uh, you've heard the results of the audit. I guess we need a motion to approve. Approve. I make a motion to accept the audit by Martin and Starnes. Second. Okay. You've heard the motion a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the audit by Martin Starnes, please raise your right hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> it's kind of also nice to see a company that has its roots in Alexander County and it's beginning to be the one that does our audit. So that's, the company's done very well. All right. Moving along, I would recognize Mr. Rick French, County Sales Tax Revenue for 2016-2017 budget year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, sales tax, uh, regular uh, sales tax, we collected $1,422,633 um, for month four <coughs> through month four, uh, which is 33% of the year budget year but we've and we've collected 32 percent we're actually though ahead of last year's number by 4.1 percent last year we did not have the new sales tax um, that can only be is restricted um, we've collected four hundred and fifty thousand seven hundred and twenty seven dollars so far which is um, 45.07 percent which again at 33 percent of the year we're we're ahead of the number we projected so that's all good news all very positive in response to the sales tax and the change, you know, obviously you guys are down there in the rural counties versus the, uh, um, I guess, urban. urban counties. That's always a hot topic. Was there much discussion about there changing really, this again? There really was. And I don't believe I heard this particular sales tax brought up at all, but there re really wasn't uh, too much talked about at all down there about sales tax. It was, it there was. other okay. things. Okay, good. <clears throat> Uh, at this time, I'll recognize Mr. French again for board appointments and reappointments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Building Services Advisory Committee reappoint Larry Jenkins, Brent Fox, Mark Foy, Tony Lackey, David Land, Brian Walker, Daryl Robertson, Lynn T, Burt Gibson, John Pilkington for one year, 
Library Board of Trustees, reappoint Darren Connor and Miranda Bergen for three years, Planning and Zoning Commission, reappoint Coy Reese, two years, Adult Daycare, CAC, reappoint Donna Albashan for three years. That right, that right, yeah. Um, Law Enforcement Center Renaming Committee appoint Mike Harrison and Trish Dagenhart um, and Board of Health appoint Larry Yoder for three years. Uh, the County Commissioner appointments appoint Commissioner Ryan Mayberry to Finance Committee, Personnel Committee, and Western Piedmont Council of Government, uh, TCC and TAC Committee, which are the Transportation Committees, appoint uh, Commissioner Josh Lale to the Western Piedmont Council of Government, Government Policy Board, appoint Commissioner Milton Campbell to the Law Enforcement Center Renaming Committee, appoint Commissioner Jeff Peel, uh, Animal Control Advisory Board, CBCC, Alexander Center Advisory Board, DSS Board, Board of Health and Veterans Committee, appoint Commissioner Ronnie Reese to the VIA Health County Commissioner's Advisory Board. Okay, you've heard the recommendations, and I think for, there is a little summary of each of those people, if you didn't know them already, about who they are and what they do. Anybody like to make a motion to accept these recommendations? Move to approve. <clears throat> Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the recommendations, please raise your right hand. <clears throat> Opposed? Okay. <clears throat> Moving right along, Mr. French, budget ordinance amendments number 17 through 21, project budget ordinance P-2. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do you want to take these one at a time and vote on each one, or do you want to? Probably so. Okay. I, no. I think that'd be wise. Okay. Uh, budget amendment number 17 is to <coughs> increase the sheriff's budget to purchase investigative equipment with the federal grant funds passed through the North Carolina Department of Public Safety, the Governor's Crime Commission. The grant budget details include computer voice stress analysis system, digital evidence, forensic recovery computer, laser trajectory and alternative light source kits, uh, photographic equipment and video camera, no local matches required. And that's Budget Amendment 17. Okay. I'll make a motion we approve Budget Amendment 17 as written. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion about Budget Amendment number 17? Hearing none, all those in favor of Budget Amendment number 17, please raise your right hand. Budget Amendment number 18, probably the one you've been waiting for. <laughs> um, is the budget for the cost of an architect's, uh, for the architect's services for the bank building renovations. The architect fees paid by the general fund can be reimbursed later from loan proceeds if the county borrows money to make the renovations. Uh, total, um, uh, it, was 120, it was 125 plus another 25,000 for all the other uh, services along with it. I was asked to um, ask the architectural firm if they would give us a number that would take us just through the receipt of bids and based on the information we received back from the architect um, that number was 85,000 that includes as that includes asbestos uh, inspection and testing site review and surveying so you could do either or if you want to do a budget amendment for this number or a budget amendment for this number I just want to make you aware of those two things. And that's budget amendment number 18. Okay, wish we'd gone to 19 first, good and 20, because I think we may get hung up here for a while. Yeah. Uh, you've heard the budget amendments. Uh, any discussion about this particular one? Well, I'll, I'll say uh, <clears throat> Milton and I had a discussion the other day about this, and um, I told him as a builder, I get this question all the time, you know, they bring you a picture and uh, a little clipping out of a magazine and ask me, you know, how much is this house going to cost? And I tell them, I have no idea how much your house is going to cost until I get a set of plans that I can look at and I can bid out and I can estimate. And this is what we're asking to do here is to develop a set of plans that we can get a price on what it's going to take to upfit that building. Um, and that's, I mean, you just got to do it. 
uh, you have to you don't have to but then that means the building sits there and it's not used but you know uh, or we put it up for sale so I think there's some I think there's another aspect of this um, also there are several things associated with the building for the renovation for the upfit that we'll have to do if we do the project for example the heating and air conditioning system in the building is, was only built to for the bank portion, which is less than a fourth of the building. So that, that that's those sizes would have to be much much larger. Um, the floor, the concrete floor, is would have to be a lot of work done to it because um, it's not level. At the very back of the building was some um, refrigeration units, and so there's that floor is actually higher in the back of that building. Uh, the roof on the building probably will have to be replaced. Um, if the discussion has been a, a little bit about looking at the interior, what the bank used, and maybe even taking all that out, so you'd have that demolition cost. Um, there's asbestos and those kind of things, which are very minor, but all those things you'll have four or $500,000 worth of, worth of cost as you go into it, so I just want to point that out. The, and so that it's clear that the estimate that we were given was, the estimate was around $2 million. Mm -hmm. So might as well just say it like it is. So you know, all in with architect fee, you're looking about 2.5 and the purchase in price. Put that, include, that would include him. Include architect. So the purchase price was 375 and I think it's 20,800 <coughs> square feet. So it's like $18 and seven cents a foot on the purchase, which obviously, I think we all feel good about the purchase and I think we all feel good about the long-term consolidation and that type of thing. I think there was just, and I will certainly say on my behalf, a little bit of sticker shock and on the upfit cost and, you know, just, I had a little reservation, maybe hit a pause button. Don't, you know, we may land at the exact same spot, but that was, that was me just having a little heartburn over that. And also, what else could you do with $2.5 million? You know, I always use the statement, 20 years from now, somebody looks back. I don't know if anybody can armchair quarterback anything you do. That's fair. But do we become they? Why did they put that there? Why did they put $2.5 million in that? Was Because I think if anything our county historically has had a problem with is we've piecemealed stuff mm -hmm. that works for now and then lo and behold, 10, 15 years from now, you know, the we's do become the days. So, you know, that's, that. and again, I think I'm the one that raised my hand a little bit at first, and I've, I've talked to you guys individually, and it's just my concern, and, you know, if everybody, if nobody else has that concern, but. Uh, well, I have concern any time we spend that much money, but are, are the benefits going to outweigh the cost? Is that, and that's what you got to look at. And just like we talked about, you know, everything's, so many things have been done halfway over the last 30, 40 years that now it's, you know, us and trying to fix a lot of things. Um, the, uh, well, and, you know, we, we just got to look at, are we going to be able to use less personnel in um, combining or putting a lot of these departments in the same places? Are there going to be better oversight? Uh, are you going to get more bang for your buck uh, for those employees? So, and uh, we've got a lot, a lot to consider. This is just the second step. The first step was buying the building. This is the second step we've got to take, and uh, we've got to develop the plans. And we've got to, uh, you know, we've got kind of a rough drawing out there. But that's that's a long way from what the final product will be if we move this route. Gentlemen. My, my opinion, and Milt, you know, the chairman and I have had a couple conversations about this. Um, one thing I would say um, with being the co-chair of the building committee at Bethlehem Baptist Church that burned a year and a half ago. Um, and we're looking at building a much bigger, much more expensive building than we're talking about here. Um, I mean, just, you know, just a couple things that I'll throw out there. We interviewed architects 
um, four. They all four charged a different amount of money. We had, I want to say, you know, fees ranging from, you know, 8% of the expected cost down to, <coughs> you know, we're paying four, I think we're ending up paying 4.1%. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you've seen the design of our new facility, but it is much more than the inside of a rectangular one-story building. Um, I actually know Ernie Seals personally. My dad would give me a real hard time about what I'm saying right now because he and Ernie Seals are good friends. Um, CBSA is a great firm. But have we talked to any other architectural firms? No. Um, I'm going to do what my grandma used to call get in the flesh. Why not? I hate, you know, if uh, our church, we did. If it's my house, I'm not going to talk, call one architect and say, hey, what do you, what do you charge? Same thing with, you know, and I understand they bid it. Well, guess who bids these contracts? The companies that are big enough to have an on-staff, full-time person that their job is to watch the newspapers. So you get bids from the same four or five on anything you bid, whether it's the school system and, or the county or a, bit, a large, you know, whatever. And there may very well be somebody else out there that is more than capable that doesn't have near the overhead of a Hickory Construction, Moss Marlowe, you know, these very legit one, I mean, and I'm not saying they're not great companies because they, you know, do a lot of good stuff. But just as a, this is that private versus public thing that I have such a hard time with. Um, can, can I ask a question though? Sure. Uh, we put that out for bid. Is it illegal if we call people and say, hey, you know, no, I mean, there is no, you can select an architect, you can just select one if you want to do that. You can interview, but you, you can if, go through a process. We did that with our detention center. We mm -hmm. um, took proposals from various architectural firms and selected a firm to do it. Um, we went through that process for the, the, the Applied Technology Center and CBSA was the selection for that. But we, we didn't do that. Um, we were just trying to get a, basically at this point, trying to get to a place where we knew what the costs were going to be. Right. The, uh, we'll do whatever you want us to do. Well, just realize it'll take more time. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but we're not hiring CBSA by passing this amendment, are we? Well, you, it, what read, you're doing, it, does, it does not read anything about that. We're not. That's what we were in essence doing, though. Well, but With the 125. He's, he's, I mean, Commissioner Lyle's correct. I mean, we, that's who we, we had talked to. Well, but doesn't, don't we have to come back and approve no. that contract? No. We do not? Okay. No. Well, you know, I think the, based on that estimate, I think the finished price per square foot was about $121. And, you know, I, I apologize. I don't really know how that compares. I was trying to think of anything that I've looked at recently in my job where it's that similar uh, type facility, but we've got a newer facility about the same square footage, but uh, I meant to look at that appraisal just to see where that came in, the, but. The facility cost um, compare to comparable jobs that our contractor at, at Applied Technologies have, has done, and also our engineer has worked in the past, so. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I, you know, and, and I'm not saying this is always the case, but I do know, you know, commercial construction firms subscribe to and use, you know, McGraw-Hill information uh, you know, for, I mean, this may sound crazy, but these big companies actually, McGraw Hill puts out all this information. Yeah. And if you're looking to build, re, you know, retail office space, mm -hmm. McGraw Hill tells you how much it's going to roughly cost per square foot. And then you take a location factor for where you are in the United States and you multiply that. And Shazam, there's, you know, and that's their, hey, it's going to cost you about 2.1 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, architects use the same kind of information. 
you know, um, and then, you know, okay, they're using that, you know, they're using that basic information that, and we're trying to make a decision on spending $2 million or not. Um, you know, I just, I'm, um, I under, I, I'm not saying that we, by any means, that we shouldn't do this project. Um, I'm a firm believer in, in that this project will benefit the citizens of Alexander County. I mean, if you live in Vashti and you've got to drive to the old Wittenberg school to sign your child up to play t-ball or to play volleyball or to be a cheerleader, you know, um, or, for, you know, the builders that walk into the building inspections, you know, and you're, what, a uh, mile and a half from the Catawba County line? Um, I mean, it makes sense to have everybody there, not to mention their facility is terrible. I mean, the facility those, all those guys are in is bad. You know, and we know <clears throat> we know the health department needs more room, and this would free up another you know another building for them by you know pulling some other things. But um, I just uh, like the chairman said, I I just have a lot of I have indigestion. I have no yeah. problem whatsoever in uh, let's. Talk to some more architects. You know, mm -hmm. slow yeah. it down by more. Kind of hit the pause button. Yeah, I, think, I don't yeah. think we get hurt by hitting the pause button. Could, I think it would be very yeah. prudent to speak with other architects. Yeah. Well, and I think. And so, I think oh, I'm just going. Rich want to say something. Well, I think uh, you know the people, the citizens, are looking at us to make the best decision. And just as everybody has said, I, I got a little heartburn when I seen those figures. It's kind of. Uh, I guess I'm a little too logical, but if I already got the house and everything there, I would hope it wouldn't cost me as much to, you know, do the insides. But, you know, it's a different thing when we're looking at, you know, government contracts. But I really think we should maybe just pull back a little bit, get some pricing. You know, I, I'm tickled that we have that building and that we can uh, hopefully do that project. I just want to make sure we're getting the most uh, effective dollar spent. Well, yeah, and Rick's want to say oh, something. I was okay. going to say two, Go two, two things. One is that if, if you guys want us to do that, we'll certainly do that. We will need, we really need one of you guys to serve with us to do that, which means we should start pretty soon. And remember that the, if we're going to, if we're going to finance this, that'll be meetings. that will be, we'd have to, yeah, this all's got to be, all needs to work together. And the second point is, and I know we don't mean it that way. We're not, this is not the fault of CBSA. We no. approached them and asked them. Oh, no, no, no. And I know, but I'm just, yeah. you know, the public is just there. thinking, I don't want them to think that, you know, that's going on. It's not. We, yeah. They did a great job at our applied technology. We've used other architectural firms for other county projects, whether it been the um, law enforcement and detention center or whether it was DSS expansion or any of the projects. And we don't do a lot, but... Um, but we'll certainly do that. But we'll need one of you guys to serve, at least one of you guys to serve, no more than two, serve on a committee. I know. I would nominate Commissioner Lale for that. Okay. <laughs> I would recommend <laughs> Commissioner Lale too. Okay. I think Commissioner Lale well, volunteers for that. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, get some yeah. dates. He raised his hand. Okay. okay. No. Well, I mean, and when I, the, the last comment I wanted to make, um, I think what, um, you know, Commissioner Mayberry was saying, and I, you know, and, and, and I've had, and Milton and I, or the chairman, excuse me, have had that conversation several times. Um, you know, we've got local people that, you know, and I don't mean, any, you know, just any, any, any old home, you know, any old GC with a hammer and a pickup truck can do this. No, I'm not saying anybody with a hammer and a pickup truck can do this job. But, you know, I do feel like when it's, be, you know, which which I don't think we've done in the past it necessarily. Um, you know, and I'm not saying being, and, I, and I'm not saying being selective in any way, shape, or form, or discriminatory in any way, shape, or form. But when it's time, you know, but when we are bidding this thing, you know, let's contact build inspections and say, who are the bill? You know, who's pulled? Who's pulled a 
commercial permit in Alexander County in the last whatever. And, you know, you know, and, you know, because I, I do believe that there are local, you know, local people that have the capability of doing this job and doing it well. Um, you know, there are other commercial projects in the county that small, you know, smaller people have done. Um, and let, let me, you know, uh, they, and who, and I'm not yeah. saying that that would definitely save money, but it may. And if so, you know, and if they come in with a better number than some of the big guys, super. And, and most likely they'd have to be bonded. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you require a performance this. bond yeah. on something like yeah. this. Uh, and like I say, I'm, I don't, and I don't mean just, you know, just right. Joe Blow off the street. I mean legitimate, you know, legitimate construction license. companies. Unlimited yeah. license. Yeah. You'd have to have unlimited license. You'd have to be bonded. Bond. You'd have workers' um, comp. you got to have property liability insurance. Yeah, you, you got to have, have all these insurance. things. And, and there's yeah. very few of us out there that would fall under that. But there are some of us. Yeah. And, uh, um, I would mention one other thing about plans because, um, and an architect that you hire, you don't always just hire the cheapest person available. No. And uh, uh, I'm, Josh has built a lot of projects, and so have I. And if you hire the, always hire the cheapest person available, uh, you're going to run into trouble. And uh, uh, as far as architects go, we've got a project we're working on right now, and it had lots of errors in it, and it has cost a lot of money and time because of some errors. So, we're just trying to find the right value for the right. buck. And yeah. you know, and that's and that's that's the uh, yeah. There's no it's there's not a simple answer, or we'd be doing it now, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I mean, and when I say a simple answer, there's not a simple way to do this project, knowing that we did all our due diligence, that we are getting the most for our money and I say our money I'm talking about you know hey that fund balance is up because we had to raise taxes well guess what people weren't happy about that including myself no. okay well no. let's not waste that you know let's do our darndest on this particular project as well as you know all the others like we have been to not waste that additional money that we said hey everybody you've got to pay no. I, I think it is uh, a good idea to to look at this and, and let's awesome. uh, I'll make the proposal that uh, table uh, just do we just table this a budget table yeah let's budget. table that and, and yeah. let's get let's uh, move on to the next one yeah get some we need a motion uh, to table it bids you need a motion yeah. to table it Rick yes, yes. all right do I hear that motion Dave? I will move that we uh, table budget ordinance amendment number 18 okay uh, second that got a motion and second uh, concerning budget amendments number 18 all those in fact any more excuse me is there any more discussion about it before we vote okay hearing none all those in favor of tabling the item raise your right hand uh one other question are we all in agreement that josh uh, uh represent the board on that i thought that's what y'all yeah so okay that's what took it. all right i just wanted to make sure everybody was okay with that what did y'all volunteer no, 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 no. no. oh <laughs> that doesn't have to be a formal motion no, no. All right, Mr. French, next one. Budget amendment number 19 is the budget for the local match required by the ARC grant for the industrial park pump station replacement project. When the fiscal year 2017 budget was being prepared, the local match amount was estimated at 175000 and was originally budgeted as a transfer from the general fund to the county water and sewer fund. Since the pump station replacement project will require a separate project budget ordinance, the county will use a project fund to account for the revenues and expenditures instead of using the existing county water and sewer fund, which has an annual budget. The $175,000 <coughs> budget estimate is being moved to the grant project fund, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, and increased by $123,349 to meet the ARC match grant match requirement. And that's budget amendment number 19. That is the pump uh, uh, station uh, project replacement uh, project at the industrial park. Okay, is entertain a motion for budget ordinance amendment number 19. Uh, I'll move to approve budget ordinance uh, amendment number 19. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any more discussion about budget amendment number 19? 
Amazing what sewage costs. <laughs> Got to get it out of there. Uh, all right. Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of the approval of budget amendment number 19, please raise your right hand. Okay, Mr. French. Number 20 is to budget for the local match required by the ARC grant for the broadband study. And that is a $10,000 match, total of $20,000 for the, that project. I'll move to approve uh, budget ordinance amendment number 20. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion about budget amendment number 20? Hearing none, all those in favor of budget amendment number 20, please raise your right hand. I suppose. No. Okay. Budget amendment number 21 is to decrease the amount budgeted as contingency expense due to revenues that will be less than originally budgeted. CBCC is uh, waiving the industry contributions to the project, so the source of revenue is not available. Uh, and that's at $137,000 uh, that reduces that project cost. That is more than the project actually does cost, though. So the project at, up there will not cost quite that amount of money. Total. Say that again now. The total amount for the project is not $2.7 million. It's closer to 2.4, 2.3, somewhere in that okay. range. So the 137 okay. is not is not needed for that purpose. So, <coughs> so essentially the companies that pledged pledged money to help with the expense of the building are not that's making that contribution because the building didn't cost quite as much as what was yes sir we anticipate as was anticipated uh, the the industries were told at the beginning of the, of the project that if if their pledges were not needed they would not be required to pay them uh, I will tell you that in in their defense they are paying for the scholarships for all the folks that participate and for the kits so there, there's quite a bit of money over time that they're going to be pledging to the project. And there are, there's a lot of assistance that they're providing to the students. Okay. You've heard budget amendment number 21. Someone would like to make a motion? Uh, I'll move to approve budget ordinance amendment number 21. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. I'll second. Okay, is there any more discussion about budget amendment number 21? Okay. Are they given the option to go ahead and make their <laughs> their gift? I'm sure they have that option. Yeah. They may not want to exercise uh, yeah, it this time. I, I just yeah. that. Uh, all those in favor of budget amendment number 21, please raise your right hand. Okay, Mr. French. Uh, the, the last uh, budget, we have a project ordinance, and that's for the Alexander County Broadband Study. And that's what we mentioned earlier, $10,000 from the Appalachian Regional Commission and $10,000 from Alexander County for a total of $20,000. And then the, the $20,000 is going to be used for consulting fees for the project. And those of you who may not aware, the broadband is going to be a longer term project. I think uh, Commissioner Mayberry and I sat in on the first meeting and this is not something that happens overnight, mm -hmm. but it could have a really positive impact on our county and our internet access throughout the county as well as the quality of the services and potentially create more competition and ultimately pricing of the services so but uh, this is the beginning and I could see this taking several years to, to come to fruition and and I'll add uh, you you asked me earlier about the uh, uh, association meetings in Raleigh that we had last week um, if sales tax was a big topic, no, it wasn't. But broadband was a big topic. So uh, you've got on the federal level and the state level, this is going to be uh, a, a lot of a lot of the uh, you know the work going forward is going to fall into this category. So okay. uh, I guess we need a motion on that to accept project <clears throat> budget ordinance P-2. Uh, I will move to approve project ordinance uh, P-2. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, a motion and second. Is there any discussion? I think this. I think this is a good investment of a small amount of money. Game changer, possibly. Uh, all those in favor of uh, project budget ordinance P-2, please raise your right hand. 
Okay, Mr. French. Uh, under county manager's report, a couple things uh, to mention. One is that um, MBI builders will start Rocky Phase Park uh, Phase 2 on January 30th. The project uh, consists of construction of uh, basically a building, entrance drive, parking area, water and uh, sewer, sanitary sewer utilities, storm drainage, erosion control. The contract time for the project is, is 180 days. We have to be finished by September, into September, because our part of the funds expire then. So um, that'll be starting soon, and we'll keep you advised of that. Um, the 2017, 2018 just seems like we just finished the other budget process, but the 2017, 2018 budget calendar for Alexander County is enclosed. And I just want to sort of give highlight some dates. You have that in your packet. February 21st, there'll be a department head meeting where budget information will be distributed to department heads and mailed and to outside agencies. Um, Budget requests and revenue estimates are due to uh, the finance department and outside agency requests are also due to finance by March 31st. Uh, the finance department uh, provides a printout to the county manager by April 21st. Uh, school board requests are due by April 25th from the, from the school board. Um, May 1st, the county commissioners uh, discuss budget topics, if there's things that we need to talk about as we get to, into the budget. Um, just ideas and things. Uh, May 15th, at our commissioner's meeting, I'll submit a budget and a budget message. Um, the county manager is required to provide a copy um, of balanced <coughs> budget to you by May the 30th. Um, and then uh, possible budget work sessions uh, later in May. Uh, commissioners could hold a public hearing on June the 5th, which, which is our scheduled first meeting in June. And then additional work sessions could be held between the, that date and June 19th is the, the suggested commissioner's uh, meeting where we would adopt the 2017-2018 budget. You don't need to approve that. That's just the, that's sure. sort of the framework of which we use every year. Just want to put that out there. Uh, and also, um, this is not a big deal, but it's important to the county. Uh, we had some Rocky Face calendars made. We're selling them for $7 a piece. They're gorgeous. We had uh, people in the county took pictures uh, each month, and we had those pictures are included in the Rocky Face calendar. So if you have not purchased one yet, um, there's some at the park for sale. There, we have some at county offices. We don't have a whole lot, but um, they're beautiful. And um, like you consider purchasing one. And the very last thing we, you've heard us talk about, probably you don't want us to talk about it anymore, is the vertical mile challenge. <laughs> um, we've had a large number of people participate. Most of those are Alexander County residents. Um, over 1,349 people are in the process of doing the one mile <coughs> challenge. 380 are in the process of doing the five mile challenge and 90 are doing the 10 mile challenge. And we have five more that are also doing the 100 laps and probably should be looked at for mental health. But um, uh, that's all I have. I have some some items well, for closed session. Well, you've got that volume meeting deal, you know, for those people that just keep running and I know. running and I running. Know. I know. Take them with you. Who's chasing them? Who? <laughs> it must be something bad at <laughs> the bottom of that hill. Energetic. Oh, it's something good. That's why people keep going up. Okay, gentlemen, you also have in your packet the consent agenda. So I need a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the content, consent agenda as uh, presented. We have a second. Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Ayes have it. I guess we're to the part we all like. Uh, at this point in time, we will go into closed session. North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11 to discuss economic development, contractual, and personnel. We will reconvene only to adjourn. So I'd uh, like that in the form of a motion to go to closed session. Uh, so move. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Good job. You did.